Alrighty. Um, so I'm not really usually one to do uh, product reviews or anything like that. Um, but if I come across something that, uh, that I really like, that you know, solves some problem or some frustration that I had, um, and especially if it's made by you know, like a small business or a hobbyist, um, you know, I like to, like to make a, a video or, or something of it. You know, um, and uh, uh, this thing, the Soda Beams Click to Tune, is uh, just such uh, a thing that I'm, I'm very happy with. Kind of wish I had ordered one sooner, but you know, it is what it is. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, what it is <laughs> is it's 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 a button. It's a button that attaches to your ICOM radio. Um, versions of these also exist for Yesu and probably people have made it for Kenwood radios and other radios that have an ATU. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to use an external ATU um, that's not like an ICOM or ICOM compatible or Yesu, Yesu compatible, whatever, uh, tuner with your radios. Um, and it does this in, in two different ways. Um, so first off, um, I'm going to point out the tuner I'm using in this instance, um, I'm using that ATU-130 that I mentioned in an earlier video. Um, I'm also pretty happy with it. It's been working great. Um, that's a solid little performer. Um, however, sometimes it can be a little bit slow to tune. And when I say slow, it can take, you know, four or five seconds to, to uh, you know, to get a good match. And... Something that can happen in that time, if the, the rig determines that it's taking too long, the rig will automatically turn on its own internal tuner. Now you can turn it back off by pressing the tuner button, but you can't permanently turn it off. And that's kind of frustrating because um, you know, every once in a while the conditions are such that the ATU-130 just needs a little bit more time and I find myself just constantly, you know, turning off the tuner, resetting tune mode on the ATU, you know, go again into the, the um, you know, using WSJTX, hitting the tune button and, you know, making sure I've got the power set right. And it, it could just be kind of a frustrating little dance. Um, and so initially I started looking into uh, ways to, to basically tell the, the rig that there's an external tuner connected. Um, so in this case, you can see right there on the screen, where it says EXT. So the rig thinks there's an external tuner connected. And that's relatively simple. You put a small resistor across two pins. Um, and so I, you, know, you can do that. You can make a mod like that and, and solve the problem. Um, so that, that's half of the problem. The other half of the problem is that it can be, depending on the mode that you're in, um, it can be kind of annoying to, uh, to get that, the, the carrier that you need for the tuner to do its job. You know, you want it to be relatively low power and you want a continuous wave. And if you use the built-in tuner or an external tuner and you just, you know, press and hold the tune button, it'll automatically send a 10 watt continuous wave you know, nice pure sine wave, easy, you know, problem solved tuners like that. Um, some digital software like WSGATX, you know, has that tune button. Of course, you still have to remember to adjust the power. You know, in this case, I have a nice power dial, but, um, you know, some smaller or newer radios, it can be kind of fiddly to go in and, um, you know, go into the menus and change the power output level. Um, if you have an external tuner connected, it does the same thing. Um, you know, so if you're using an LDG tuner or one of the ICOM tuners and you press that tune button, the radio knows there's an external tuner connected and it will automatically cut the power to, um, you know, to 10 watts and uh, produce that continuous wave tuning signal. Um, however, if you're using a tuner like this guy, which just has buttons on the front and doesn't directly interface with the radio other than through RF, you, you know, you kind of have to do it manually. So the click to tune perfectly solves that problem uh, because it does two things. It, um, 
it shows the radio that there is a tuner connected. Um, so the internal radio, as long as this guy is plugged in, the, the radio's internal tuner is permanently disabled. Uh, and then also, if you press the button, it will generate, it will immediately generate that 10 watt, uh, you know, pure sine wave continuous tone, um, which is perfect for tuners. Um, and it's also very affordable. Um, so it, in my case, I opted to get it as a kit because I like to build things. It's a very, very simple kit. It is a button and two resistors and a wire. Um, the hardest part about the kit is assembling the connector. And even then it's not that hard, you can put it together in you know, 15, 20 minutes. Um, I'd say for anybody out there that's um, you know, already into amateur radio and they maybe want to get into the electronic side of things a little bit more, if you want to build one of these, you know, you can save a few dollars and buy the, the, the kit version, the unassembled version. Um, I don't remember exactly how much it was. I want to say 10 or $12 plus a few bucks for shipping. And I got some other stuff from Soda Beams as well because I wanted to support them a little bit. Um, yeah, so I'll just show how it works here. So let me switch over to, let's say, 15 meters. And I'll reset the tuner. Oops. So I reset the tuner. And then we go into tune mode here and then press the button. It just works. And if you look, now that I'm tuned up, so um, the radio, no matter what, when you press the button, the radio thinks that we're tuned, so the little tune enunciator comes on. Now, that will come on even if the tuner doesn't find a tune. That's, I guess, one downside to this, so you have to keep an eye on the tuner. If your tuner doesn't find a match, you, know, you can still have problems. Um, but if I press the button again, you know, you'll see we're getting 10 watts. In this case, we have a perfect SWR of 1.0, 1.01. As soon as I release the button, it stops. Well, it's a very, very nice little device. I've just got it tucked right here next to the radio. And if I need to, you know, here we want to switch back to 40 meters. I can even switch the tuner into auto mode. Hit tune. The tuner does a little bit of clicking and clacking. And it's all done. So very, very useful little tool for uh, using these radios with external tuners. So, thanks for watching.